Well, definitely got some sad news to uh, make a video on. However, I'm going to spin it as, and fortunately it was shocking to learn about the passing of Ken King. However, I think for this video, I want to talk about and, be, and thank all the contributions that King King has done, you know, not only in the Calgary business and sports community all together there. And it's definitely something that the Calgary Flames should be thankful for, for Ken King and his contributions there. Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And as I just said there, I'll be talking about Ken King as the other day there, he sadly passed away at the age of 68 there. I know he had cancer and uh, it was just still shocking to you know read the hear about it as he was 68 years old and uh, you know that gets me thinking and reflecting on all the contributions that he made starting with the Calgary Flames when he was first president back in 2001 here and almost 20 years I gotta say he's definitely built up his legacy and you know in some way the Calgary Flames should honor him as a builder somehow if they're gonna do that they should also uh, honor Cliff Fletcher as well that's another story here but uh, getting back to uh, King King here I mean it's just sad that uh, I mean it's sad when anyone passes away but it just made it even sadder that on the day that it was announced that he passed away was the same day where uh, the NHL, and given what's been going on in the news in the world recently on how all Calgary sports, not just Calgary sports, but all major sports, is being paused there. And of course, I made a video about that, but uh, it just, you know, added even more of a sadder day here. And the fact that, uh, I mean, this, I've got to be thankful for what King King has built here, because, I mean, he took over. The president of the Calgary Flames in 2001 there and it was still a challenging time for the Calgary Flames then that was before you know there was more economic you know stability and certainty not only for the Calgary Flames organization but for the whole NHL and I also made that video where I felt the lockout that wiped out the 2004-05 season was necessary here but I think because of King King's contributions. Calgary was able to weather that storm up until that lockout there. And then has strengthened not only the Calgary Flames and how they are an impact to the Calgary community there, but with all Calgary sports teams combined there. Because before King King took over the Calgary Flames there, it felt like there wasn't as much optimism I know that he replaced Ron Bremner at the time, and he was the president of the club there. And I mean, when Ken King came in back, I said back in 2001, there, I felt that uh, he was a breath of fresh air, and he brought in some more optimism and visionary visions for the uh, Calgary Flames. And uh, I just liked what he provided, and ultimately, I mean, you could. Also, maybe criticize him at times where, but he was more focused on the business side of things, not on the on ice product. I mean, as president here, you would have some say in terms of uh, personnel running the team, but King King definitely did his job on building the business side of the franchise there, and he definitely put it in perspective that how the franchise has evolved here is that. I mean, when the Calgary Flames were just a team, you know, independently owned when they first moved from Atlanta back in 1980 there. I mean, the Calgary Flames definitely added more assets there. As they owned the Calgary Hitman, they bought the Calgary Hitman back in 1997 there. And then the Calgary Flames ultimately purchased the Calgary Stampeders. And then ultimately... The Calgary Roughnecks are still around because after when Brad Bannister did 
the original owner of the Calgary Roughnecks, you know, couldn't financially keep the team anymore. It was the Calgary Flames that bought the Calgary Roughnecks to keep them alive and running as well. And it was in 2013 that Ken King definitely made it, you know, apparent that how much bigger and more complex the Calgary, you know, Flames and the organization has got more complex there that uh, when you have more, uh, own more teams there, you should also add in that we also own the uh, Stockton Heat, the AHL team, and the Kansas City Mavericks, or the ECL team, which is kind of the uh, step below the Stockton Heat there. So Calgary definitely has more at stake here, and that's definitely more common for major sports teams to own all the teams in the same city now. There's definitely many examples of that, as you can see there. You know, like say the Toronto Maple Leafs, they, you got the Toronto Sports and Maple Leaf Entertainment, or I think that's what's called there uh, here in Calgary of the Calgary Sport and Entertainment Group there. And Ken King was first the president of the Calgary Flames, and then it wasn't until 2013 when we had the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Group that Ken King was the chair of the whole Calgary Sports and Entertainment Group. And then, you know, we brought in Brian Burke to be the president of hockey operations there where he oversees just the Calgary Flames there and Ken King still served as the alternate governor there and then the fact that uh, now we have John Bean who is now the president and CEO of the Calgary Flames there to oversee the business executive side there but uh, there was definitely a lot of things that I gotta say that Ken King has done that uh, we should be thankful for for his contributions as uh, he definitely uh, you know brought more stability to the Calgary Flames especially during the time in the early 2001-04 period there where you know Calgary and all their small market Canadian teams there before you know we implemented the new economic system and seller cap was just hanging on until then and then of course we had that magical run to the Stanley Cup final there but I'm going to say there was a couple instances where I actually got to see Ken King in person. And actually on one occasion I actually got to talk to him live in person one to one there. Steffley was a genuine guy there. I mean, definitely had a big handshake there and he definitely had a big, great personality that uh, you know, definitely we're all gonna miss here. And I'll pull up the article and I'll put the description in the, the article in the description on the release talking about Ken King and all that he's done in the Calgary business and the Flames there but uh, at the time I was going to state there and uh, Ken King definitely had a thing that uh, he was doing a leadership uh, speech there a Ken King speech there and uh, so I definitely attended that while I was going to state there as he's that was the first time that I saw him in person actually I was back in early 2004 before the magical run to the Stanley Cup final there and I know that uh, one person asked and that also at that time there that was fresh off after when Edmonton hosted the Heritage Classic and someone asked about uh, you know does Calgary have plans to host the Heritage Classic and Ken King definitely say that there was discussions or thoughts about it I mean this was before uh, you know, outdoor games definitely became more of a thing in the NHL there, because you had the Heritage Classic in 2003 there, and then the next, you know, major winter outdoor game was the Winter Classic in 2008 there, and then it became an annual thing, and then Heritage Classic's definitely been an irregular thing, but uh, we did eventually host a Heritage Classic back in 2011 there. So that was the first time I got to see Ken King in person there, but it was mostly more of a leadership, you know, kind of a, you know, conference, you know, just to sit down and listen to him talk and talk about all of his experiences in sports and that and sports and business. And then the other time I actually got to see him, actually chat with him a little one-on-one -on -one here, was actually in the 2015 Western Final. I made the trip up to Edmonton to watch the Calgary Stampeders and the Edmonton Eskimos as the Edmonton Eskimos were hosting the, uh, Western final that season there because keep in mind that at that time Ken King was the Calgary Sports and Entertainment 
you know, head. So he overseed all the teams there. And I was, you know, watching the Calgary Stampeders, you know, warming up there and trying to uh, encourage them. Unfortunately, I guess I didn't encourage them hard enough as we didn't win that Western Fall there. But uh, I was trying to encourage them during warm-up there because, you know, there was Edmonton fans, you know, chirping at Calgary players. And that's why, well, as you'd expect, at Battle of Alberta's there. But, uh, you know, the sidelines there at Como Stadium. I saw Ken King and, uh, and actually Gordon Norrie, another guy that I've seen many times where first he was with the Calgary Stampeders, but now is with the, you know, Calgary Flames and as a VP there. You know, I actually got to shake hands and talk to, you know, Ken King and Gordon Norrie there. He actually asked me if I went on that fan bus going up there. I mean, he knew I was cheering for Calgary because obviously you have all my red on and you definitely stand out a lot more at Conwell Stadium if you're wearing red. But uh, actually, I'd, I went up there myself and spent a weekend on it. But, uh, you know, he's definitely a nice human guy that I chatted with him and definitely, uh, you know, was thankful for all the contributions he's done up to that point there. But I think the biggest, biggest thing that uh, Ken King will definitely be known for is eventually getting that event center finally agreed upon, as there definitely was a. It seemed like there was a little bit of headbutting between the city and the Calgary Flames on you know, who to pay for it, where to put it. I know he, I still personally think that uh, if they had that concept, although was that Calgary Next concept, which would have been down on the west end of downtown there, I would have liked it more. Because I think part of the reason why the Calgary Flames bought the Calgary Stampeders there was hopefully maybe they can get a new building for the Calgary Stampeders as we definitely need a new football stadium as well here. I mean, the Saldom is still an iconic building in downtown Calgary here, but uh, when it comes to, you know, you know, modern facilities compared to arenas today there, the Saldom definitely is dated here. I mean, keep in mind it was designed and built almost 40 years ago, but uh, ultimately it was, you know, this past summer here that Ken King was a big part and finally, you know, the Calgary Flames and the city coming to in a deal to get this event center going and where it is it that the construction will start in twenty twenty one here and I think it's the twenty twenty four twenty five season that when the Calgary Flames will be opening in the new event center, whatever it's gonna be called, it's just that's the generic name we give it right now here. And hopefully me being in the engineering and planning industry that uh, maybe our firm will get to have some say and get to work on some of that design of new said event center there but uh, I think that's the biggest contribution that uh, Ken King will be forever known for and we should be thankful for as Calgary sports fans here and then you know the vision about uh, buying all these other teams here was well, what I'm mostly doing is Calgary being a Calgary sports fan on my YouTube channel here, that uh, I follow all the teams. I mean, I have season tickets for the Calgary Stampeders, and I've this will be my 24th season. This is my second season as a Calgary Roughnecks season ticket holder, but I also go to the odd game there. Both of those are easier and more affordable to go to those games. Plus, the you know schedule of the games mostly works better for my work schedule there. I love my hockey, but it's just, you know, economics and schedule why I don't go as many hockey games here, but what I'm trying to say here is I'm definitely, you know, an overall sports fan here that uh, many people that live in other major cities, and I'm sure if you took, if you tried to transplant me and put me in a city that has all the big four, you know, the NHL, the NBA, MLB, and NFL, I'm sure I'll probably be a fan of all four of those teams, and maybe some sort of small extent. I mean, the unofficial big fifth big major league is MLS soccer there. Maybe I would actually go to the odd soccer game there, but uh, that's one thing that's nice about having a you know a sport and entertainment group is the fact that you're able to cross promote, and that's definitely been nice to see at all sporting events. That uh, you know I'm a fan of all the teams, and I. Talk about all the teams on here that, uh, you know, we could be thankful for that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely shocking and sad 
to learn about this and read the story here. I mean, he was 68 years old, and I mean, I mentioned that he had cancer there, which definitely is unfortunate that takes people way too young there. But uh, the Ken King definitely was always active in the community there. I mean, I've seen him, you know, at football games and hockey games and lacrosse games. His name gets mentioned when they introduce, you know, the team and the opening roster there. And I know that uh, you also saw Ken King prominent in that news conference when back a couple of years ago when they announced that the 107th Great Cup in 2019 was going to be announced, it was going to be hosted in Calgary there. And you saw Ken King at that press conference there too. And also Ken King was also a huge supporter of John Huffnagel, who is the president of the Calgary Stampeders and still general manager there, but you know he was brought in to be the coach and general manager there. It's just how the organizational structure has changed there. I mean, the only thing that maybe some could criticize Ken King for was the fact that, uh, you know, he did his job business-wise, and that's what mostly this video is about, and we should be thankful about that, but, you know, sometimes it's personnel decisions that have more direct effect to the hockey team. I know that he was definitely, he was definitely a huge fan of Daryl Sutter, and, uh, and even then, I mean, I did made my video on kind of a joking. It was a much longer video than anticipate where I just called it Happy Daryl Sutter Day because uh, it just happened that he came to the Calgary Flames and left the Calgary Flames on the same calendar date as his tenure was exactly eight years long. But Ken King definitely was a huge fan of Daryl Sutter there, and uh, I think he definitely held on him too long to uh, be general manager there and. Ultimately, that was one of the reasons why uh, Dale Sutter eventually left the Calgary Flames because he was asked to by Ken King. I'm sure the ownership probably maybe you know put a little pressure on him then. But uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously thoughts, prayers to uh, you know his family and that, and friends that uh, know him a lot more personally than I have. I mean, I've definitely seen him a few times and chatted with him a few times over the years and. Uh, as a fan and definitely know him because of you know being the role that he has I mean he's I mean he used to work at both papers the Herald and Sun there and but mostly he's known for his work that he's done on the business side with the Calgary Flames starting from 2001 to now where it's the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Group and I'm going to say all franchises are uh, better than ever business wise on, you know, being a staple in the Calgary community there. So, I mean, rest in peace to you, you Ken King. I mean, thanks for all the contributions there. And uh, too bad you're not going to see the new event center open and live and, uh, you know, be able enough to uh, be there on opening day when, you know, puck drop on the 2024-25 season for the Calgary Flames, Calgary Hitman and, Got your rough next there, and hopefully your legacy you left behind will be open the door for someone else to continue the legacy and uh, keep the you know the flames here and be a part of the Calgary community, and hopefully you can also uh, look at the Calgary Stampeders and uh, get the new stadium done for them, or really really update. McMahon Stadium is we definitely need a new stadium there but uh, yeah this is my video just thanking Ken King and everything that he's done for the Calgary Flames and uh, I mean yeah just sad and shocking to read about the news but it is what it is there so anyway if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey all the Flames have been rough next to Stan Peters all part of the Calgary Sport and Entertainment Group there. Just uh, make sure you, you know, like and subscribe and to follow along on my YouTube channel as I want to continue to keep growing on this platform here. I also do personal vlogs and attempt to comedy and I also share my experiences, let's say, like at a sporting event or when I'm on the road there on the holidays. So that's all I put on this channel here. So if that sounds like anything you want to watch to follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey, you know what you need to do. And I also have my social media links in the description below there. 
So, as I'll say in this case, go Flames go. And thank you to Ken King for all your contributions and uh, keeping Calgary, you know, going. And definitely was a fixture in the Calgary community. I should also thought add in before I close out here, I also, you know, I remember there was some advertisement for, I think it was a business leaders conference that I saw, you know, sometimes you see ads on the uh, LRT trains there and, you know, Ken King's picture was on that train as well there. So he definitely was a predominant figure in the uh, Calgary community there and was born and raised in Saskatchewan here, which it seems like everybody in Canada has roots and was born and raised in Saskatchewan here and including myself here I've been born and raised here all my life but all my family roots on my uh, mother's side goes back to Saskatchewan there that uh, seems to be the case about uh, most Canadians is that we know and have connections to have somebody from Saskatchewan and the fact that uh, Saskatchewan uh, seems to produce hockey talent for all of us to enjoy here so, as I say, I'll see you in the next video here.